Have you ever noticed the small metal sculptures that run along the Roosevelt Road Bridge downtown? Turns out they mean more than you might think. Jeffrey Bear is here with more on this and other viewer questions in tonight's edition of Ask Jeffrey. Jeffrey, good to see you. Great, great to be here. Uh, let's go to this first question, and it's fascinating. The St. John of God Church is being dismantled stone by stone. I'd like to know about the history of this church and what will happen to those stones. This is a totally amazing story. So these stones are being taken down from the uh, shuttered St. John of God Church. This is in the south side, sort of back of the yards, new city neighborhood. They are being shipped 50 miles north, and they will be reassembled as the exterior of a new Catholic church in Old Mill Creek, Illinois, near the Wisconsin border, serving the St. Raphael the Archangel Roman Catholic Parish. So the old church is being dismantled. Every stone is being numbered. They're, they're taking down 237-foot bell towers with those crosses on the top that you can see there, um, and a huge columned entrance porch, and they're shipping it all 50 miles to the north. Now, it's, it's going to cost about $10 million, which the church says is about what it would cost to build a new church, but they believe they're getting a kind of workmanship, you know, that you can't get these days. Now, it's, it, it looks, looks like an archaeological sort of dig or a restoration. It, it looks really It's an amazing story. Amazing. St. Raphael the Archangel is the first new parish in the Chicago Archdiocese in uh, 12 years. It was formed in 2007, and since then it's been uh, holding its uh, services in a, a, a barn, a converted barn. And they filled the barn with um, uh, artifacts from old churches, and Cardinal George was there, and he said, this is the most beautiful temporary church church I've ever seen, and he sort of half-jokingly said, I ought to give you St. John of God, and they took him seriously wow. and uh, said, you know, that's not a bad idea. Um, St. John of God was built in 1920. The architect was Henry Schlax. It served a largely Polish congregation. You can see that, that entrance uh, there that's already been taken down. It's a beautiful church. Yeah. Well, it was, it was shuttered in 1992, and um, had badly deteriorated on the interior. So mm. here, here's where the story gets even more amazing. The interior of the new church, uh, St. Raphael, the Archangel, is being recycled from a different shuttered church in the Chicago Archdiocese. This is um, St. Peter Canisius. This is the, a church that was shuttered less than five years ago, and so the interior has been preserved, so they're getting the interior from that. And there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more? They're getting the organ from the old um, Medina Temple, uh, which, which was converted, you know, a few years ago to um, a Bloomingdale. Bloomingdale's home store. That's, that's this massive uh, church organ. Uh, that's also going there. So it's, this church is being sort of put together from all these different elements. Preservationists have some issues with this. They feel like, gee, wouldn't it be better to keep a building in its context, maybe reuse it? But the you know, other people say, well, nobody was stepping forward to reuse this church, and it would have just fallen down. Um, so they argue that this is a, uh, the sort of highest and best use for it. One really lovely thing is that the cornerstone from the original church in Latin was installed on the new church, and then the back half of that was sliced off, and a new cornerstone in English was mounted, as you can see, right above it on the new church. So there's sort of the, the old and the new. And uh, they hope that, uh, St. Raphael's hopes this will all be completed by um, about a year from now, Advent of 2011. It sounds like this very creative triple transplant where you have the exterior of one church, the interior of another church, and an organ from the old Madonna Temple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what I've been reading says that, that this is unprecedented, that no one can find an example of anything like this ever having been done before. Wow. Our next question. There is a monument to Garibaldi at the southern end of the South Pond in Lincoln Park. It almost looks like a mausoleum. What is the history of this? Well, Garibaldi's not in there. Um, now that South Pond has been restored, you know, I think this relic is going to be causing, you know, raising a lot of questions. Um, as it turns out, it's really just the base from a monument to Giuseppe Garibaldi that once stood in Lincoln Park, but it was moved in 1982. So the, there was something on top of there that. There was a once, statue once of, a of Garibaldi on, on top of that, uh, but that was moved. Um, that was all dedicated in 1901. Um, the base has some inscriptions on it. So Garibaldi, uh, he lived from 1807 to 1882. He was a military hero who led many armies in revolutionary battles and helped unify Italy in the 19th century. This is what the statue originally looked like uh -huh. on top of the base. Um, he 
fought with um, other armies, too, in conflicts all over the world, and he captained ships across the Pacific and across the Atlantic. His followers were called red shirts because uh, it's possible, well, they couldn't afford uniforms, uh, so they wore red shirts, and it may be that Garibaldi got the idea for the red shirts when he was living in New York, and he saw the volunteer firemen, the heroic volunteer firemen there wearing red shirts. Is that Garibaldi himself? That is Garibaldi. That I was see. a picture of Garibaldi. Um, he was a hero in the Chicago Italian-American community, and in the 1970s, they kind of put out the uh, idea that maybe the statue should be moved to the Little Italy neighborhood. Um, and so it actually now stands um, uh, in a little park on Polk Street, just east of Ashland in the Medical Center, and it's been renamed Garibaldi Park. It huh. used to be called McLaren Park. Now, why the 63-ton base was never moved with it, you know, is, is not a question I can answer. Uh, Probably no one wanted to remove it stone by stone and re reassemble it yeah, somewhere pretty else, expensive. like uh, like the uh, previous project. Well, that's we're right. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question: All along the Roosevelt Road Bridge, there are sculptures of animals on top of planet Earth, sitting on a pile of books. What is the meaning of these? Well, these represent the institutions that are linked by this. 1,500 foot long bridge. You know, the Roosevelt Road Bridge is about a quarter mile long. Um, it spans the Central Station neighborhood. Then it goes, if you're going to the west, it goes across the Metro Tracks and then across the river. So it links the University of Illinois at Chicago with the museum campus. So the books represent the University of Illinois at Chicago. The dolphins represent the Shedd Aquarium. The mastodons and other prehistoric creatures represent the Field Museum. There's an astrolabe, which is a celestial measuring instrument that represents the, um, the Adler Planetarium. Um, so it's kind of symbolically linking these institutions together. The artist was named Miklos Simon, Hungarian born, and um, he uh, teaches at um, Columbia College in Chicago. And actually, you know, all of this was part of a big restoration and renovation of that bridge, which also included a lot of other classical elements. Uh, Diane Legg Camp of DLK Architects did it, and there's, you know, the obelisks and um, um, the, the electroliers, the, the fancy street lights and a, and a bike lane. So it was all, all done when, when these, this bridge was being uh, redone in the 1990s. You know, when you're driving that bridge, I have... Uh, a bunch of times, you, you see these little delight, they, they seem whimsical and delightful and just sort of, they put you in a good mood when you see them. Yeah, well, and they're, you know, they're human scale. They're pedestrian scale. Right. You know, because the, the bridge is kind of heroic. It's almost like a highway bridge. So it, it's anticipating the idea that this is a neighborhood now and people will be walking here. Because as you drive by them, because of their scale, you don't get a, you don't get a full appreciation. Right. But I was stuck in traffic once, and I, I looked over, and I, <laughs> and I saw these things, and I thought, those are really cool. Good to be stuck in traffic. Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, thank you very much. Sure thing.